I'm Professor John Kreiling from Computer Science at Nelson Mandela University. We're here at Propeller in Port Elizabeth where we will be interacting with a group of students. As a professor in computer science, I'm very aware that there's a desperate shortage of software developers or computer programmers in South Africa and most of the world. And today we're talking innovation and it's going to be very difficult for South Africa to be on the cutting edge of innovation in the world if we do not produce enough software developers. All around us, there's computer programs running the world. I think we're very aware of all the well-known apps on our phones, but when we get into a lift, or when we get into our car, there's a computer program doing stuff for us in the background. Therefore, it's important for us to make students and learners in our country aware of these careers. But our biggest challenge is that 16,000 of our schools don't even have computer labs. So those learners grow up often not being aware of careers like software development and computer programming. Okay, good afternoon. I trust that you can hear me. Can someone just indicate that everything is working from my side? All good. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, as some of you know, this is a repeat of a workshop I presented two weeks ago at the SASTA conference. So I'm not trying to do anything new. It is a repeat of that conference. We didn't have enough time to finish. Uh, but I also am aware that there are new people uh, today that weren't at that workshop. I trust that you all received the six Word documents that I emailed to you earlier today, because I would like you to interact with them uh, as we continue. I'm going to jump between sharing my screen, the PowerPoint, and then coming back so that I can get feedback. Uh, and then just a request, if you're seeing someone that needs to be admitted while I'm on my screen, please admit people so that we can have them, have them joining us. Okay, so I'm going to go to my screen now, and then we'll start with our first activity soon. Uh, the plan is to be finished by 5 o'clock. Sorry, I, I just need to mention that I am recording this session. So if anyone is, uh, does not want it to be recorded, please let me know as soon as possible. Uh, but I am planning to record. I am recording it at the moment. Okay, so just to give uh, credit where credit is due, uh, Kelly Bush, Selby Makuna, Leander Wilsbazen and Keith Gibson has been part of this process since the beginning of the year. Uh, and some of the content I'm using here is from them. So I just want to credit them uh, for what we're doing uh, this afternoon. I think we, we're all aware, and I'm just going to quickly give the background, that there's a, there's a desperate skills shortage in software development or programmers in South Africa. And that is one of the reasons why I got involved with this project four years ago as a professor in computer science and aware that we're not producing at all enough graduates for the market out there. Our president is one of the international leaders regarding the fourth industrial revolution. And consequently, he's pushed for the introduction of coding and robotics in our schools. But we're all aware of the fact that 16,000 of our schools do not have computers. Uh, probably over 90% of our teachers are not trained to offer coding and robotics. And even those computers, our schools that do have labs, do not have technical staff. I was in a school last week where the PCs are all packed in the corner of the classroom. They've never been used. And I think we've seen these kind of laboratories across our country. What we also pick up, and I've been traveling through various parts of our country, is the fear of missing out. Uh, our learners, our parents, our teachers, our headmasters are aware of the fourth industrial revolution, but they're also very aware that their learners are not going to be part of this if a plan is not made. The traditional kids coding tools like Scratch and Mindstorms and many others, I'm not against them, I'm very positive that if you can use them, use them. 
but I would uh, like to acknowledge that for those schools, those 16,000 schools that do not have laboratories or those schools that do not have the funds, some of these tools that we kind of take for granted will never be accessible to their learners. So what we're talking about today, unplugged coding, uh, for those who don't know, it's about teaching coding without computers, and then obviously without computer labs. And for long, I thought this was plan B for the schools that don't have labs, until one of my graduates emailed me beginning of the year, and he said, Prof, this is plan A, especially at primary school level. Uh, we do not want to put kids in a lab immediately. There's much more creativity, much more thinking happening when they're not in front of a blinking computer screen. The other aspect about a lab is once you go into a lab, there's no group work. And we can all agree that um, a lot of learning happens when people work together. And then it sometimes also takes away the fun. What we're going to try and show you today is the fun in introducing coding. Okay, so this is exercise one. This is why, where I become dependent on you interacting. You will also have the Word document exercise one. Uh, and what I want you to do here is you've got eight posters. And in the poster, you've got a, a, a child, a chair, and a shoe. And that rectangle is a shoe. So I want you to try and order these posters in, in, in a sequence where between the first and the second poster and between the second and the third poster, etc., only the person or the shoe moves. So you can't have two consecutive posters where the shoe and the person moves, or the rectangle if you don't see it as a shoe. So I'm going to hand it back to you now. Please participate on your PC. Um, Either the word, go to the Word document and see where you can order these posters as many as possible applying that rule. Okay, so I'm going to leave you for a minute of, or two, and then I'm going to ask people literally to give me feedback. Okay, so the people that have just joined, we are on exercise one, the Word document that I sent you. Uh, you need to order those posters in a sequence so, so that between each consecutive poster, um, uh, between each consecutive poster, either the shoe or the person moves, never both. So see whether you can do that. And then I'm going to ask people to share their screen. I'm going to ask for volunteers. I'm doing my best to make this an interactive session. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Uh, is there a volunteer that's prepared to share your screen and to show us your sequence of posters? Anyone can just talk to me and tell me you want to share your screen. Anyone out there? I'm really dependent on you guys playing with. My last call. Okay, Maria, I see you have a hand up. Yeah, if I don't see you, just talk to me. Okay, Maria, share your screen and show us your posters. Uh, 
Um, hi, I'm Maria. I'm in Swakop Munt. Um, I'm not perfect. I started, but I just want to show you what I've done. Uh, yeah, sure. How do I share it? So I can I go to share? Yes, um, yeah. Is that open I... share tray? Yeah, I think Wait. you should. Is this the error in the top right hand corner? Share content. Um, let me just, just see. I do not have an arrow. I've got an uh, open share tray. Is that, that what I? Uh, OK, Maybe I'll try that. Oh, that looks fine. And there's mine. It's not perfect. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> OK, so is that your order? <laughs> that is as far as I got when you stopped me. <laughs> OK, so you start in the top left hand corner from the first to the second one. It looks fine. It's only the shoe moving. But then the person moves behind the chair. Then the person moves on top, the child moves on top of the chair. What happens between the fourth and the fifth? Oh, the, the, uh, the, the shoe moves I, to the head. Yes, and then I was stopping there and, and I saw that I was kind of from there on. I didn't know because the other two you have to move both. So okay, yeah. I gather that you have to start with one of these and have to end with one of these. Yeah. And in between I was wrong. But anyway, okay. I tried. <laughs> yeah. OK, so it's, it's not important that we get it all right. It's just that you understand the, 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 the instructions that I give you. And I'll explain now why this is uh, important. So let's just quickly go back to my PowerPoint. Um, Must I do something or can I just sit still? <laughs> yeah, I think you, yeah, if you, if you can just stop sharing. OK, so how do I do that? Let me just see. Sorry. Um, I go to um, Mrs. Wallace that can't, uh, uh, doesn't know what to do, but let me see. Where is the stop trade? Stop sharing. I've done it. Okay. Right. okay. Right. So let's go to mine. Can you guys see mine? Okay. So, I, okay. Now I never shared. Yeah. Sorry. I'm also not too sharp with these things. I think now I think I am sharing. Um, yes. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. I just wanted to show. So I'm not going to give the correct. There's no correct answer. This is just a photo of uh, learners in Mtata in the rural Eastern Cape playing this game. Uh, Lusanda Matungo is doing a great work with unplugged coding in that region. And I think this was a grade one class uh, playing the shoe game. So let's see. Someone, uh, I can't see my screen, so just switch off your on your mic. And tell me, why do you think do we do this exercise? Why is this a good exercise to start with when one does uh, computing a uh, programming? When one talks about programming to learners. Anyone yes. just want to speak to me? Hi, sorry, yes. it's Carmen speaking. Yes, um, I think it's to teach the pro logic and process. One step has to follow the other in order to follow the entire process. And if you change something in the middle, you are not going to end where you want to be. OK, yeah, yeah that's, a, yes. that's, a, that's a good answer, but I need a, even a more basic answer. But your answer is correct. It's just your higher grade answer. I need a lower grade <laughs> no. answer. Sorry. Anyone else want to try? Um, perhaps sequencing or to focus on only one uh, object um, at a time? Yeah, okay, you guys are all thinking ahead of me. The basic thing that we try to show with these kind of activities is that uh, coding or computer, a computer program is basically just a set of instructions that tells a computer what to do. So that's what we're trying to do. So when you play this game, when you play it in the physical class, you won't. I started with kind of the second part of this game. The first part would be just to put up a poster and the child responds to what's on the poster. Uh, so or the whole class response. So you're giving them instructions using the posters. Uh, so a computer program is simply a list of instructions that tells the computer what to do. If there's no list of instructions, the computer can't do it. Um, and I always use the analogy of a, a recipe. When someone goes into a kitchen and bakes a cake or makes food, 
The person, the chef, the mom or the dad follows a list of instructions to make the food. So a program is nothing different than a recipe. So if you look, I just want to check, it looks like some people are trying to get in. I just want to see whether I need to admit people. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my slide. Um, so by basic activities like brushing your teeth, getting dressed, making cereal, one could get uh, learners to just simply write the instructions down for brushing their teeth or doing these basic activities and then tell them that you're actually writing a little program that tells you what to do. Or the other way that you could do it is to ask them to draw pictures instead of writing down the instructions. Well, we're talking now foundation phase, but the, the basic rule is since no coding has happened in schools, uh, if you're talking with a grade 7 class, you could do the same because they, they don't have any prior learning. So this is the basic introduction to what coding is. So it's, it's about a list of instructions and you simulate that by everyday activities. Now I want people to please don't be shy. Let's try and get new people to talk to me. What are the games that kids play outside that are also a list of instructions? Can someone give me games that we can let them play to show them this is also coding. This is also an example of programming. Anyone? Hopscotch. Hopscotch, brilliant. Yes, hopscotch is 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 a good idea, uh, example because you have those little those blocks on the ground and you've got the numbers and they've got to follow the numbers. So they're actually following a list of instructions. Anything else? Debojo, I see you. You want you've got your hand up. Boko, uh, you, uh, you muted. We can't hear you. No, sorry, Boko. There's something wrong with your microphone. Unfortunately, we can't hear you. Monopoly. Monopoly is 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 probably an example, but that's not something to start off with because it's a very complicated program. One wants basic instructions. Okay. Anyone else? Snakes and ladders. Snakes and ladders is a good example. That's easy enough to understand. Uh, Toboko, you, you, your mic is muted if you're trying to speak. Yeah, okay, sorry. Toboko, your microphone is unfortunately not working. We can't hear you. Okay, so some of the games that, that you've mentioned is hopscotch. And then what we've played in this poster game is actually Simon Says. So that's a very basic uh, set of instructions. And then Twister, for those of you that are young enough to still play Twister, it's also a list of instructions that people follow. The next activity I want to do is, 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 is whether when we're talking about coding at schools, do we really need to talk about coding? Because it's really not about coding. There's something much more important at play here than teaching learners how to code. And that is the fancy word computational thinking or very basic, simply problem solving. Um, <clears throat> Keith Gibson here from Port Elizabeth, I don't know whether he coined this phrase, but I heard it the first time from him, where he said, you cannot translate from English to French if you cannot speak English. So the, it means nothing to learn learners to code if they can't solve problems. So if I use a very basic example, I, I see some people show, learn, teach learners how to write a website or a web page with a few HTML code lines. That's not problem solving. That's just implementing a bunch of code. Uh, it's much more important to, to spend time on problem solving than to spend time on coding. So I want to make the kind of dangerous statement that especially at primary school, 
one needs to spend the majority of time in a coding class on solving problems rather than coding. So this is your activity number two. It's also in the Word document, but you can simply just watch the screen here. You want to move uh, A to B and B to A. So you want to swap them. And you've got these options, A, B, C, D, and E. I'm going to give you time to go through these options and to say to yourself which one is the correct solution. So you've got a crane that can go up or down, left or right, can grab or release. Uh, so which one is the correct sequence of commands to swap A and B? And I'll leave you for, at it for a while. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go to the chat. Um, but while we're there, is there anyone that wants to call out a solution for us? I got B. Okay, so, yeah. so do, you all, do you all agree on B? Uh, yep, yes. <clears throat> okay, so, so if you look at B, the crane goes down grabs A, goes up, moves to the right, goes down and release A in the middle, and it goes uh, up, goes right, goes down to grab B, goes up, goes left twice to put A on the left-hand side, and then it goes up again, goes right, goes down to grab A, goes up, goes right, goes down, and releases A on the right-hand side. So this is a very typical and, and kind of a famous, well-known uh, exercise that you can do to do problem solving <coughs> with your learners. Uh, I'll give you some resources now. Uh, this is Excelsior Primary School here in Port Elizabeth, in Kodaga. The teacher there started a coding club and for the first month or two she just did problem solving. And she actually found these activities on Pinterest. Uh, so she literally went on Pinterest and entered problem-solving examples for kids or something. And we don't have time now to explain what they're doing here. You can email me last, later and I can send you a, a link to this. Um, but she spent time on problem-solving before starting coding. Uh, Kelly Bush uh, from East London, Hudson Park, is busy putting together for us a a list of problem solving activities for foundation phase, grade R to grade three. Um, as soon as it's um, available, we'll let you know. And then Keith Gibson from Collegiate Girls High uh, in Quebeja has put together 40 um, computational activity examples, uh, probably for, for the older kids from about grade four upwards, I guess. If you want this, this is available. You can just email me afterwards and we'll send you an electronic copy of the 40 activities and you can start using them in your class. Before I get to the, the, the Tanks Coding app, the examples that we did at the start with the activities is from the Boats Coding Kit. And I'll explain, I'll say more about that later on. Okay, so the Tanks Coding app, we're not going to use the app today uh, because you don't have the tokens and everything to use it, but um, what the examples I'm doing from here onwards is back based on the Tanks Coding app that my uh, honor student in 2017 developed, Byron Batterson, 
and we're using this app across the country to introduce coding to learners. So the basic idea behind the app, we just need to know this so that we can start with the activities, is for the tank to move to the star. And you have different commands that you can use to move the tank to the star. So I'm just going to play you this video quickly. Okay, so but we're not gonna do we're not gonna do the, the app today. We're gonna do physical uh, pen and paper activities. So you should have the word document exercise three. Uh, if you can open it, what you want to do is you want to move the tank to the star. And you can use these different commands. So you can just to show you you can move them around. On, in your word document into a sequence to get the tank to the start. So I'm going to leave you at it for a while just to try and do that quickly. Okay, is there someone brave enough to share us, uh, your solution, your Word document, share it with us on the screen? Any volunteer? Okay, Hilda, I see your hand is up. Yes. Okay, I'll share. It's not fitting entirely, but it, um, that's, yeah. that's that one. Can you see it? Uh, it's not through yet. Okay. Uh, share. Okay, wait. Share screen. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Right, so you move forward. Maybe just show us the picture. Can you just go scroll up a bit? Yeah. So what the other says is move forward the tank. Then the tank turns right, moves forward twice, and then you turn right, and what you do then? And then, uh, oh, that was turn right, and then, uh, I had to, sorry, I had to have another move forward. Okay, so we Not do that one. on purpose, that you don't have enough move forwards. Is there anyone that wants to, don't oh, even need did to I have to finish? Did we have to finish with the blocks available? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Is there anyone with a solution? Just talk. I see there's hands up, but I can't see who. It's a, it's a little computational thinking problem here. Um, I have got one. Um, I think I finished it. I fixed it fast. But, Who's talking um, to me now? It, it's Maria. I um, did it as she did it, but then I moved Le uh, I moved backwards. Uh, uh, no, I can't say it. Can I show it? Yeah, show it to <laughs> us. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, now I've forgotten again what I must do. Can you imagine this? Um, I go to share. Oh, yeah. sorry, I'm at the wrong one. Okay, and there I am. Okay. Um, sorry. Yes. Yeah, so just yeah, so explain to us what you did at the end. Um, I moved forward, then I turned left, and then I reversed. Yes, into so that's the, the trick. 
When the kids play tanks, they specifically specifically only give them three move forwards. So in quite a few of their challenges, they've got to see this kind of thinking out of the box because they, the obvious thing to do at the end is to turn right and then move forward onto the star, but you only have three move forwards. So the other way of doing it is turning left and then reversing onto the star. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll stop sharing if I can just get there. Sorry. <laughs> Hilda, <laughs> no I guess you want to take down your hand or you want to say something? Oh, no, sorry. It's down. Okay, so let's go back to my screen. Okay. So now I want you guys to, to see what you can do here. If someone could, I see these people in the lobby, if someone could admit them, please. What you have here is a, is a five by five grid. Initially, no blocks are colored in. So you see yourself as having the pen in the top left-hand corner. And you've got these five commands, move right, move left, move down, move up, and color. So color means where you are currently, color that block. Notice this is different to tanks. Move left and right is relative to the page. And up and down is relative to the page. So if you start on the top left hand corner, right down uh, on your Word document or wherever, the sequence of commands that would color in the, this diagonal, these five blocks from the top left to the bottom right. Okay, is that clear? Yes. Okay, so you start in the top left hand corner, you write down a sequence of commands using those five to color in those five diagonal blocks. Okay, so the typical thing that you would do is to color, then move right, move down, color, move right, move down, color, move right, move down, color, move right, move down, color. Some of you could have just do the, done the opposite, color, down, right, the same thing. But I chose this, color, right, down, color, right, down, color, right, down, color, right, down, color. Now, I guess you, I hope you can all see that there's a pattern. The CRD is repeated. And then very important to note that there's a C at the end that's not part of the repetition. So, the way that we do this in terms of coding, so we're going into the kind of more complicated coding part of, of the lesson now, is we say repeat four times. And then what do we repeat? We repeat the C, the R, and the D. And then we just use the word N. Now, this is not a specific language encoding. It's what they call, would call pseudo code. So it's just kind of mixing English with programming. So we say we're repeating four times. What are we repeating four times? The letters color, right, and down. And then the end says that we are finished with what's being repeated. And then after the end, we would say color. 
So this last color is not part of the thing that's repeated. So just the kind of the terminology that we use in code, this thing where we repeat something is called a loop. So in, in most programs, if they talk about a loop, it's something that's repeated a certain number of times. This CRD in the middle is called the body of the loop. So we say repeat times four, we say repeat four times the body of the loop, the C, the R, and the D. And then the end is, indicates the, the end of the body of the loop, and then after that we just carry on with the code. So the C is only done once. Okay. Now I'm, now I'm, go I'm going into stuff here that, that might be too quick, but I'm trying my best not to go too quick here. So, in terms of tanks coding, if you have these commands on the left hand side, ignore the ones on the right for now. Can, any, can anyone just talk to me? I'm, I can't see the screen, so don't put your, up your hand, don't be polite. What do you think this command does before I explain to you, just using your gut feeling? Anyone wants to tell me? Just talk to me. It um, gives you the sequence that you must use, yeah, and then it, tell what, you what, it, what does it actually do. What happens to the tank? Oh, it um, it instructs the tank how to move. Yeah, how many times? Um, um, uh, um one, two, <laughs> and I must count again. I'm sorry. Um, one, two, three, four times. Right, you may just look at the thing on the left hand side. Yeah. So, so the thing on the left hand side says repeat times three move forward. So how many times does it move forward? Can you see that it will move forward three times? I'm sorry, I am not at the page. I'll just look at my own page quickly. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah, no, it's not in the word. You must just look at my PowerPoint slide now. Oh, okay. I think I am sharing. You are sh um, sh sharing. You could just. Yes, I am sharing. Okay. Okay, so what you what you see is the repeat command in, in tanks is the command that's used for a loop. At the bottom of the repeat command says how many times something must be repeated. And on top of the repeat command is what we call the body of the loop. So something's repeated three times. What is repeated three times? move forward. So the tank will move forward three times. So your next ex oh, okay. exercise. You've got these four blocks. It's in the Word document. Move them around so that your tank will reach the star. Move them around so that your tank reaches the star. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Anyone that hasn't shared today that would well, like to share your Word document and give me your, your answer. You're a very shy class today. Okay, I'll throw it open to anyone that wants to show me the solution. Hi, Paul. Okay, share. Yes, share your screen. Okay, what was your solution?
This is Maria Sherry. Okay, who's sharing the screen at the moment? Um, it is me, but if there's somebody else, I would love somebody else to do it. Is there someone else I'd like to share? Maria has shared before. If you could just unshare Maria. Okay. Anyone else? Someone spoke to me. Eric. Uh, Paul, not me. Yeah, me. Okay, share your screen. Uh, Ishma. Just give me 10 seconds. Okay. To... Um, unfortunately, I didn't join with the laptop. I joined with the phone. But then okay. I can take a picture and then shoot. Oh, let me actually unmute uh, my camera so that you can see it. Who's speaking to me now? It's Ishmael. Ishmael, okay. Okay, sorry, it's... Eric. Let's give Ishmael a... See whether you can show it to us. Okay. Mm. Let me do this. I okay, believe try and show us. Okay, so you've got start, repeat, you've got the move forward on top and it, below the repeat. Just show us below the repeat. Below the repeat, it's repeating five times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you've got it. If you could stop sharing, I'll share mine quickly. Okay, so what you do is you say start. You've got the repeat here. So that's indicating that I've got a loop. The tank's got to move one, two, three, four, five steps forward. So something's got to repeat it five times. And I've already twisted the move forward. So the tank is going to move forward five times. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So this is called a loop, where something is moved, the body of the loop is moved forward and it's repeated five times. Now I want you to look at this. Remember the rules of a loop, body of the loop. Anyone just talk to me. You don't need to put up your hand. Just tell me how many times does the tank move forward? Is it six times? Six times, yes. Okay, do you all agree that this is six times? Why is it six times? The body of the loop is at the top here. It's two move forwards. And the two move forwards, which is the body of the loop, is repeated three times, which gives you six. So this set of commands moves the, the tank forward six times. Okay, just a quick little trick. It's not standard coding, but we just need this trick quickly uh, to be able to do the last few examples. You'll see the repeat here has the infinite at the bottom. Now, we all understand the infinite, so technically this thing says, keep on moving forward infinitely. Uh, but the tank has a trick that says as soon as this tank reaches the star, it will be happy and it will stop. So it won't keep on moving. It will just move until it reaches the star. Are you all clear on that? So it's called the, the, the principle of early termination. Although if we look at the loop here and we didn't look at the picture, we would say that this tank would move forward infinitely. But as soon as it hits a star, it's happy and it stops. Okay, so now this is real high grade stuff and I hope you stay with me. We've got uh, a few minutes still left. If you look at where the tank is here and where the star is, right down you've got the commands forward, backward, left, right, and now we're just cheating. You've got infinite number of forwards. You don't need, you can't say only have three. So see whether you can write down on a piece of paper the commands that would take the tank to the star. 
So it's move forward, move forward. What are the other commands that get, will get your tank to the star? So I'm going to give you a, a minute or two to do that. Okay, does anyone want to just, just speak out your, your sequence of commands to get to the star? Uh, uh, hi, Prof. Yes, uh, just read uh, out your command. Um, I would say it uh, move forward two times. Yeah, then, don't say that. Just say move forward, move forward. Uh, doing that okay. on purpose. Move forward, move forward, and then left, and then... That's right. It's turn right. right. Right, and then move uh, it, it backward two times. Yeah, okay, you're still remembering the thing that you don't have enough forwards, but I said you've got unlimited forwards. So, um, so the solution that I'm looking for is move forward, move forward, turn right, move forward, move forward, turn right move forward, move forward. So I hope you can all see that. Now notice what I've done here. Now I'm, I'm not going to... Keeping in mind the early termination rule, remember it says even though the code says do something, if you reach a star you're happy. I'm adding a, a last R here at the end. So what that does to me is I immediately have another pattern. FFR is repeated three times. Can you all see that? So FFR is repeat, FFR, FFR, FFR. Now you will say to me, we don't need that last turn right, but the early termination rule says we can put it in there just to cheat so that we get three repeats. Now see whether you can use these tokens that I've given you here to take the tank to the star. Uh, important thing that I have not mentioned, if I have to go back uh, to this one, the way the body of the loop works with the repeat, it's the token closest to the repeat is done first, and then you move away from the repeat. Okay, so see whether you can see how to use these tokens and only these tokens to get your tank to the star. I just want to see whether Tobojo has, has Tobojo, you want to say something or is it an old hand? Okay. I'm going to stop sharing now. Is there anyone that wants to volunteer their solution? And now we're going into high grade stuff now. So anyone? Okay, no one's brave enough. So the way that I would do it, I would start. And then obviously there's some repeat involved here. So I start and I repeat. Now if you see this pattern is repeated three times. So I say repeat times three. So what do I repeat three times? Move forward. Move forward. Turn right. 
So the body of the loop is the three tokens on top of the repeat, and the times three is at the bottom. So it's move forward, move forward, turn right, move forward, move forward, turn right, move forward, move forward, and then because of the early termination rule, the last turn right will not be done. Okay. Unfortunately, we, we, we're not in a class now, so it's difficult to see whether you guys have got this. Let's give you a minute or so. If someone just wants to ask a question, does not like, understand this code, any, any indication? Um, this, it's Maria. I just want to know, why did you not start with forward, forward, and then put turn right next to the repeat? In other words, from the top, do you always start as soon um, as near as possible from the repeat, yes. and then you go on? Um, yeah, the, the way the Tang's code has been developed is that if you in at the repeat, it starts from the repeat outward, away okay. from the repeat in that sequence. So it doesn't always read from the top to the bottom. It reads from the repeat away. Okay, thank you very much. So it does move forward, move forward, turn right. Thank you. Okay. Right. So is there anyone that wants to use just their gut feeling before I explain this. The first loop that we did up to now is called the for loop, where you know exactly how many times you're going to repeat the body of the loop. So what do you think this loop does? If you just read the English and apply your gut feeling. Prof, Anyone? speak to me. I think that um, this one would um, tell us to keep moving, but only while the path is clear. So if there's something yes. blocking you, it would stop. So it just keeps on moving until it hits a wall or a, some blockage. Yes. Say that. So while my path is clear, while there's nothing in my way, I keep moving. Okay, so if you look at this example we did just now, instead of having a repeat times five, we simply say, while my path is clear, move forward. So it moves, and remember the early termination says when it reaches the star, it stops. So the advantage of this one is you don't need to go and count your number of blocks. It just moves until it hits the star. We're nearly done. Can anyone tell me, this is now kind of really high grade, how many times will this tank move forward? Um, may I speak? Yes. Uh, I, I think it incorporates the question I wanted to ask. I think it will be four times because in the fifth block there's a star. Will it move till on the star or will it stop before the star? Okay, you had the previous slide now. Um, Yes, I'm at the while game. Sorry, sorry. I just wanted to know that. Yeah, no, it will move five times until it until it's on top of the star. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but this repeat we've got here now with the times three. Um, anyone want to tell me how many think, times you think it will move forward? Nine. Nine times. Explain to me why you say nine. Um, at the top you've got move. Uh, move forward, repeating three times. So that's your main instruction. Okay. And then it's repeating three times. So it's three times yes. three, three nine. So the, the repeat next to the start, the body of that repeat is another repeat on top. So the body of the repeat moves the star tank forward three times. And that is repeated three times. So the tank will move forward nine times. Now I'm very aware that it's five o'clock. So I'm going to skip this example because it's really too difficult to, to, to rush through it. Um, it's just a basic example of a helicopter flying over coal plants and changing them into solar plants. So I'm just going to explain to you what's happening here is what is the body of the repeat here. Yeah. The body of the repeat is a while loop. And what does the while loops do? What does the body of the loop do? do? It says move forward until I hit a wall and then turn right. 
So if I pl apply this, the first time that the repeat is done, the helicopter will fly, 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 fly until it hits the wall, and then it will turn right. So that's the first repeat. The second repeat will do this body of the loop again, so it will fly, fly until it hits a wall, and then it will turn right. And then the third time that this body of the loop is done, it will fly until it hits a wall, and it will turn right. So that command will take it up to there. Okay, so the fly until you hit a wall, turn right is repeated three times, and it ends up there. Okay, so that's all the algorithms. I just quickly want to close off uh, and then not waste your time. The tanks school kit is this, and we've been using this today. The school kit contains seven lesson plans. Uh, all the levels in the game, the game actually has 35 levels. I've quickly taken you up to about level 12 today. And then instructional videos that can be WhatsApp or that's on a flash drive. And this kit will then allow, and it's got eight of the games, so it'll allow a class of 40 to play if you have enough cell phones. And it's for grade four to upwards. And then the boats kit, the one that we started off with, has 10 lessons that introduces foundation phase kids. You'll see there's a shoe, the shoe example. So it has 10 lessons with all these concepts of coding. And it will also allow a teacher to teach to a class of 40. And all these resources are on the flash drive. So it can be printed for black and white copies to be repeated. This is the kind of unplugged coding workshops. All these things works in groups. On the left hand side is a, is a workshop we presented in Kayamandi in Stellenbosch. With this kind of coding, we can use do tournaments. On the right hand side is 120 learners playing Jan Kreberga in a tournament. What we see happen very often now is that schools start coding clubs or NGOs start coding clubs uh, because the curriculum is just too full, so they either started over break or in the afternoons, over weekends. There's one coding club in, in Port Alfred that meets on Sundays. Uh, once the kids start playing these games, it becomes learner-driven because they can they kind of watch the videos and they play ahead. We have virtual tournaments. We've just finished a virtual tournament now for Mandela Day where the kids play boats virtually at home and the scores are sent to my tablet, to my laptop, and I can see who wins after a few days. And I want to end up with this and then we can have a quick discussion or we can email afterwards. The task of coding unplugged is just to introduce the concept of coding. That's it's a list of instructions that tells a computer what to do and to get kids to start dreaming about this career. I'm not saying they're all gonna become software developers, but um, they will at least know about coding. Uh, Yolanda Jordan on this photo grew up in Mount Frere in the rural Eastern Cape. The only access she had to coding was reading the Da Vinci Code. That made her start to dream about coding and planning a career, and she ended up studying with us uh, computers. And this little soundtrack, sorry, I just want to check whether I, I added a sound. I just want to make sure that I, we don't lose this now. I just want to end up with this little video, which was taken young Utenaik. The excitement is mounting. It will help me when I want to work at VW so that I can program the, ro the robots there at VW. Okay. So that is it. That is my email address. You all have it. Uh, 
I will send you some links afterwards now or maybe later tonight or tomorrow morning link to the tools that we've been using. Remember, there's an invite that you can contact me if you want the computational activity tools uh, from Keith Gibson. I'll email that to you for free. And then we also work on sponsorships for the tanks and the boats kits. Uh, what I always is an invitation. If you can motivate me that your school or NGO does not have the funding, you can apply to become a beneficiary. We can find, uh, receive these kits at, at no cost but obviously not always immediately. So I'll put you on a list of beneficiaries and as I get sponsors from corporates, I'll approach you and then you can get a sponsorship. But uh, the uh, the idea is that you would be honest to me if you feel, feel your school has the budget, the tanks coding kit is 3,000 Rand, and the individual game is 150, and the boats kit is 1,500 Rand. And I think a school only needs one. That's an open invitation. Um, I'm just going to throw it open to the floor for a minute or so. If anyone wants to say something or quick, have a quick question, uh, otherwise you can email me afterwards. Okay, so you're welcome to, to email me and ask questions. You can, so the two things you can email me about if you want to request the computational activity tools, or secondly, about the kits, if you either want interested in buying them, or if you feel you do not have the, the resources, apply to become a beneficiary. And then I'll put you on my potential beneficiary list, which I literally have on my laptop. 